Minutes. This is episode 11. Today is January 13th, 2023. My name is Marie and I'm coming to you from central New Hampshire. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Old Time Knits. This is my podcast where I talk about all of the knitting stuff all the things that are off the needles and on the needles, things that have come in the mail. And today I get to announce a giveaway. So I'm pretty excited. So if this sounds like something you would enjoy, then come on in and let's get started. Alrighty, so first thing I want to talk about is what's off my needles. Um, <sighs> This has been a challenging project, but anyway, so um, myself and Sophie of, of Cozy Meadow Knits are hosting the Love Note Knit Along over on Instagram. It's running from now, well, January 1st through February 14th, and boy, are we having a great time over there. Uh, lots of people participating and lots of people uh, posting to our hashtag. Um, I will put the hashtag on the screen here. Um, anyone can join. There's still time to join. We still have people joining. And um, if you're not on Instagram and you want to join, then please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can email me um, a picture of your progress or your finished object and I certainly can post it to the hashtag. There are no prizes or anything like that. We just did this for fun and we um, we have been having so much fun. People are very excited about it. There's still so many people who have not knit this project and um, you know it it's so still so popular. I mean some crazy numbers on Ravelry have been knit I don't even know. I'd have to look it up. I think 10,000 of these things have been knit <laughs> or more. Um, and so anyway, without further ado, here is mine. I'm hoping that you can see this good. Okay. I have a lot to say about it. It did not go as planned. I originally planned to do this uh, with not mohair because I have said I have too many mohair sweaters and it, I just don't think that I'm wearing them enough. So I was going to do this with um, a yarn and um, hold it together with um, Sonder Yarn Company in there merino cashmere silk base which is um you know single uh, lace weight sorry couldn't think of the word and I was gonna hold it together with this um, and I'm not going to talk about the the dyer on this particular one because um, I had some trouble and I'm not here to bash anybody it's an indie dyer and this kind of stuff happens all the time so I knit with this and this, and I got a mm, pretty good portion down my sweater. I got through the lace and I was headed for the ribbing, and I added a second skein of yarn and um, was going to start alternating, and I did start alternating and it did not go well. So the second skein of yarn that I grabbed, let's see if I can find this, is the same dyer and um, out of the same lot. I bought this when I went to New York and you can see that there is so much variation in this. There is actually, um, let's see if I can find it here. There's actually like white spots in it and here, can you see those? Oh, so that was a bummer because, um, when I even when I was alternating it, it was striping these white strips across my sweater. You can see the difference. Um, so I had two skeins that were doing this, and I only had one skein that was saturated like this. So when I paired this with this, it just made the white all the more prominent. All that to say. I ripped it out. 
It was crushing, but I ripped it out. And I decided to start over. And um, unfortunately, I had to, the only thing I could do, I only had two skeins of this um, that were usable. And I uh, decided to go back and pair it with mohair. So that's what I did. And I paired it with this mohair, which is the same, excuse me, sorry, bumping the cameras, uh, the same dyer. Uh, and I was originally going to do it with the mohair and then I just decided I didn't want to. So two skeins of this and mohair. And this is what I got. This is my sweater now, but you can definitely see the white striping. Do you see it? I mean, it was just such a bummer to me. So I was, um, if I can get this up here a little closer, see it? So I decided I would pursue it because, um, first of all, I was heading up the knit along and I'm not going to be able to use the yarn for anything else. So I thought, what the heck? Now to the average person, when you have it on, it's really not that big of a deal. But this was not the look that I was going for. Um, and again, I did not want mohair, but here I am with mohair. So anyway, I only had two skeins. And for my sweaters, I have to add a lot of length. Um, and so I knit most of the way down the body. And then I went over and I decided to do um, a shorter sleeve because I didn't know how much yarn I was going to have. And see, you can see the striping, it's just crazy. And so I did short sleeves and then I went back and I finished the body. And this is all I had left. So that was a smart move to um, move on to the sleeves and to shorten them. Normally I would have done a three quarter inch, uh, excuse me, three quarter length, but Anyway, I made it through it and that is that, but, um, you know, sometimes you just don't know. And, um, those three skeins that I originally had of this yarn really did look very, very similar when they were in, um, you know, all skeined up in a hank. And then when I, and I didn't really notice this, all this white stuff was kind of like deep down in the middle of the skein. And um, you can see it's quite a bit of difference. So anyway, next time I will be more cautious about really um, examining the skeins a little bit further because this definitely was a bummer. And um, to have to go back and knit that whole thing all over again, I just... By the time I got to the sleeves, I really just wanted to be done with it. And that is not who I am. I like to have projects that I enjoy. And um, it was not a pleasure. I was over it. You know, at that point, I was over it. Also, when I swapped to um, this with the mohair instead of with the Sonder yarn, um, I think my gauge changed. I did not gauge swatch. But... It's a little bit closer fitting than my original love note. Um, when I blocked it, I just laid it flat. I did not stretch it. I did not try to lengthen it. My neckline's a little snug, a little tight. Um, so I don't know what I'll do with this. It's going to go over on the shelf for now because I'm totally over it, totally over it. But um, I wanted to talk a lot about that because that's the kind of stuff that happens with indie dyeing. And I love indie dyers, so don't get me wrong. Um, and I, I love that yarn. But I have a skein here um, of yarn, and I don't know what I will do with this one. Um, it's, it was so beautifully saturated, and that was the appeal for me. Um, so... That is that. What are you going to do? Life goes on. You move on. <laughs> you get over things. That might, that love note might look pretty on my mannequin for a while and maybe I will do that. So.
All right, let's see what else we have. I um I have been casting on a little madly since I got that love note done. I was so happy to have that done. I feel so bad, but um anyway, I need to Oh, no, I have it here. I'm sorry. Okay, so the first thing um, on my needles, <clears throat> I had purchased a kit for this um, not too long ago. Uh, and so I cast this on when I got rid of the love note off my needles. And here it is. This is the garter again. And this is by Tori Yu. And this is a garter stitch cardigan with no button bands. Yes! Oh, struggle with button bands every single time. All right, so my choice was to order a kit. I ordered a kit from Sandra Yarn Company, and this is the yarn that Tori used in the pattern, and this is their Sunday morning DK. And it is in the Toast and Honey colorway. It is beautiful. So this is the first time um, I'm using this yarn. It's fantastic. It really, really is. Um, and so I got started and this is a little bit different construction than I have done before. So that was kind of cool. So here it is. So you start at the back and then you um, come up here and pick up and do some short rows to shape it. And it's all I-cord edging all along the front and along the sleeves. So that'd be nice when I go to pick up sleeves. All garter stitch. It is knit obviously flat back and forth. Um, there will be purling on the sleeves because every other round to make it <clears throat> be garter stitch in the round, but I think I'm really, really gonna like this. Um, she has a couple of different options in the pattern for uh, finishing it. You can, I think hers has a split hemline or a dropped hemline in the back. Let me show you the picture again here. You can see it's a little longer in the back. Um, and I may do that, but that requires a lot of short rows. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to be a little bit longer project. I, um, the row, it's like 220 or 30 stitches. And um, it's a long haul going across a row. It's on US 6. And um, I'm very much enjoying it, but it's not speedy. And it's a little hard after you just come off a love note on a US size 10. <laughs> needle down to a, um, a six and um, so it's a little bit slower going but I'm really enjoying it the yarn is amazing amazing so I would highly recommend that yarn sometimes I like to um, you know go with the yarn that the pattern recommends especially if um, there's a kit available like that and you know it's not always necessarily um, the least expensive way to go, but it's good because uh, then you know it'll come out like the designer intended as long as you get gauge. So, um, all right, that was work in process number one, work in progress number one. And my second work in progress, and I'm really proud of myself. You guys are going to be proud of me. Remember I told you that I wasn't a blanket girl, but nevertheless, I went and cast on a cozy comfort throw not even sure why I did that. I saw so many of them. Um, so I did. And I was worried I wasn't going to stick to it and all of this and that. Because I'm not necessarily a good girl about blankets. <laughs> and this is about the point when I would get bored. But I went back to my um, process of... You know, every day I, I write down all of my projects on a list and all of the days of the week across the top. I reviewed this process in one of my previous videos. Um, you can go back and watch that one. I'm not sure which episode it is. I don't know how to link them. Maybe I can figure that out. Um, 
was my point. <laughs> Um, oh, and so I keep track of all of my projects and every day I do a little bit on each project. Uh, and so that this particular blanket has been in my rotation. I'm not going to lie, for about four or five days straight I didn't do anything on anything else except that love note. I was determined to get it done, get it off the needles because it was the second time around. So um, that was hard. So. All right, so this is the Cozy Comfort Throw, and here it is. It's growing. Wow. So the last time I podcasted, I was here. That's a little avocado stitch marker. That came from my Winter Wishes swap partner. She sent that along with some stitch markers. So I feel like I've put in a good amount, and... Um, this is, I'm just using random minis held together with random white yarn. White or lightly speckled. I have a whole bag of them. I showed this before. I have some others. This has a little bit of blue speckling in it. And so that's all I'm doing. And um, I think that the reason that I have stayed on this project so well is because it keeps it interesting because you're anxious to get to the next color. I'm not counting how many stripes, how many um, ridges I'm doing per stripe. I'm not, um, I'm not being fussy about that. Some of the stripes are larger than the other ones and um, some are not. Um, I just go until I feel like moving on. And this is so nice because it's got that I-cord border, which on any garter project, man, that really adds a nice edge. It really, really does. It's so finished. I think that this project calls for an I-cord border all the way around. Um, and I think it's an applied one in the aftermath, but I just did it as I went because I. I didn't want to deal with that either. So yeah, you can see some of the stripes are a little bit skinnier than others. But I am so proud of myself. Are you guys proud of me? <laughs> because this is about the time I fall off the bandwagon. Like I'm, this is going to be not a blanket. This is just going to be a throw. Um, and hopefully I can keep at it. But it's it's because I don't make myself you know, work for endless hours on it. Um, you know, I ch my goal is to get through a stripe a, a day, but that doesn't usually happen. Um, if I can get, you know, four or five rows across, whatever. Um, it's getting done and um, it's enjoyable. It is a very enjoyable knit. So if you have minis or scraps or advents or whatever, it's a great, easy, um, easy project to work on. It's very mindless. It's a great um, TV watching or podcast watching um, project. So that is that. And um, I'm pretty proud of myself. I thought I thought for sure I was going to fall off the bandwagon. But honestly, it's this that's keeping me accountable. And so I think that's a good thing. That's what um, the point of this is, is to uh, keep me moving forward on my knitting and not let things languish for too long. That's not to say that next week the thing doesn't end up in a closet somewhere and forgotten. <laughs> hopefully not. I don't think so. I'm going to keep it on my uh, progress rotation and, and hopefully that will help. All right. So what else have I got? Um, I got a little crazy. Like I said, after the love note, I, um, I just needed something. I don't know. So I did, um, I did cast on for another project. Um, I cast on a pair of socks. For me, aren't they cute? Love this. Okay, this, um, look at this green. It's so bright and flashy. Nice self-striping, tweedy. So this is a DK yarn in the tweed. Oh, I, I I think the green is hysterical. I found that in my stash. I was like, huh, I wonder what I had this for. 
So I don't have a recipe. I say that all the time. I will have everything, um, everything I talk about will be linked in the description box down below and I have Ravelry pages for things. So that is a half finished object actually. And I do have the second cast on. Man, these were flying off the needles for me. Love it. Love the yarn. See the Tweety Flex? So pretty, right? And also I wanted to mention that at the top of this, you can see I have just one row of a different color. So when I start my self-striping socks, I start them at the junction of where two colors meet. And that's where I put my slip knot and then I do my cast on. And so then when the first round is knit, it causes it to um, do a nice row of different color at the top. So that's kind of cool. I, I, like I said, I only do that pretty much on self-striping. So I love that look because it adds just a little color to the top. So this is, let's see, who is this? This is Northwoods Fibers. Love her a lot. I um, have quite a few of hers. She's out of Wisconsin in the U.S. This is her Maple Tweed DK self-striping in the Salem colorway. So love, love, love how it, how it turned out, but yeah. And then the um, toes and the heels that, like I said, that's just some random, I don't even know what it is, but see if I can get it untangled here. It's a mess. Here it is. Such a fun green. And then this is the Northwoods fibers. I love the color combination of the purples and the greens. Shades in that. Nice muted tones. But I threw in this because whatever. <laughs> so that is a pair for me, which is very exciting. I need some new socks. I've been wearing my socks like crazy and um, they're still holding up good, but I just feel like I need a new pair. All right. And then the last work in progress is, didn't get to work on this as much. This is the Escanda shawl. There's her name or his name. I'm not sure who. This is such a great knit. So if you haven't done a whole lot of lace before, then I would recommend this pattern because it's not um, fussy lace and it um, you have a rest row in between. So it is a pretty easy knit. And um, I didn't get as much done on this. Like I said, the, the love note consumed me forever there, but I did get some rows, a few rows put in on it. So the progress keeper is where I was before. So it's getting there. It's This is so hard to show every time because it's, um, you know, all curled up. I think it's going to be beautiful when it's blocked. But it is a 12 row lace repeat. So it's only lace on, on this part of the shawl. And it's only lace work on the right side. So that's cool. And then the shawl grows over here in the garter stitch section. So I am really loving this. Like I said it's kind of hard to show. But you get the gist of it. It's going to be so pretty. It, it should... Um, it should be blocked, should block out nicely. And so the yarn I'm using is a Merino Yak, Merino Yak Silk or a Merino Yak Nylon. Honestly, I don't have the tag. I don't know where it is. But this is um, a dyer who's no longer dyeing anymore. And this is Sprigs and Stone. It is such a glorious color. It is in the colorway ranunculus beautiful 
It really is beautiful. So I am looking forward to this. Um, I like this. I can actually do other things when I'm knitting this so the lace isn't so intense. Um, sometimes when you're doing lace, you really have to focus, focus, but um, the love note lace is kind of like that. My poor husband, I said to him, shh, stop talking. <laughs> so anyway, this is the Iskanda shawl and I really like it. It's going to be a narrow shawl. Basically, I'm going to knit until, you know, half of my skein is gone and um, then start decreasing it down. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. Not much progress, but progress nonetheless. So, and that is the last whip that I have. Um, I really felt like I went a little hog wild there right after the love note, but whatever, you know, um, when you're that wrapped up in a project, it's so satisfying and gratifying to be released from it. <laughs> That's what it felt like. It was like this big giant weight off my shoulder. And um, I'm sad to say that because I really, really enjoyed my first love note. And I really enjoyed, I was enjoying the first time around um, on this particular one. But anyway, enough about the love note. Enough, enough, enough. <laughs> but that, so that is that. Um, all right. I've got to do, find a couple of things. I'll be right back. So now on to what I got in the mail. I tried to be good. I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I didn't get too much, but I did get some fun stuff. So the first thing I got, I just talked about these guys, um, this dyer in my socks and it's Northwood Fibers. And um, she has, when a dyer has um, DK yarn, it really floats my boat. So here I am. Okay, so Northwoods Fiber. And she had a shop update. And I, I don't know what it is with these blues and blue speckly colors. Look at the speckles in this one. Okay, let me talk about this a little bit. It is the Hemlock DK. And it, this is her 7525 and her Winter Dreams colorway. So beautiful. Look at her speckles. And then the other one is also the Hemlock DK. And it is in her Frosted Pine. Oh, so beautiful. It's this icy, beautiful, I don't know what you call it, tealy. So these will probably be socks, I'm pretty sure, um, because that's why I'm getting it. This has the nylon in it. Oftentimes the DK doesn't always have nylon in it, and um, I have made socks in it. It's not the best option, but they don't wear out immediately, so... Um, yeah, so that was my first acquisition. Love the colors. Love, love, love the colors. So that was the first one. And then um, if you were with me in my previous podcasts, I talked about my yarn advent from Palmer Yarn Company. Well, Kimberly is um, famous for posting all of the beautiful stuff on Instagram and she gets me every time I love her yarn. So she had an update and she had some DK sock. Oh boy. This is one of them. And this is the other. I don't know why I'm gravitating towards this color so much this year. This year. Right now. So this is called Muted Aqua. It's her DK sock. 7525 and there's 245 um, yards to 100 grams and then she's got a couple minis to go with it beautiful absolutely beautiful so there's that one and then this one oh my gosh this is her same base her on her aubergine colorway 
be beautiful with socks. Just beautiful. So she does really nice stuff. I was very, very pleased with my um, advent calendar. I'll probably get another one from her this year. And um, she just started a yarn subscription box this year and um, I did sign up for it so that will be coming in a later podcast um, for that I'm, that's a surprise I don't know what it is every month so and then the last thing that I got um, I did sign up for another monthly club I like the monthly clubs really um, most of the time I like them I used to subscribe to the knit crate but I found I was getting a lot of yarns that I just wasn't using and um, you know some months it would be great and you're like oh my goodness this yarn is so beautiful um, but I just it wasn't consistent enough for me and I'm not I'm always afraid of these yarn clubs because I just don't really want bright colors that I'm not going to use and I'm sure you know there's plenty of people who love the bright colors and that's great um, but they're just not really my jam. So anyway, um, Magpie Fibers has um, a monthly club also. So I joined the Palmer Yarn one. And then um, this is the other one. And it's the Magpie um, Fiber Society. And it is, um, I really, really like their swanky bases. And so it comes... Um, if you haven't gotten this yet, oof, look away. It comes in a really nice box, and there is tissue paper and stuff. Uh, sorry, guys, clunking around here. And it comes with a an enamel pin. Welcome to the society. Of course, I just dropped one of the yarns. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Gosh, rookie. <laughs> Such a rookie. <laughs> All right. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> Sorry, I got my act together here. Um, okay, so this is their Swanky DK. It's 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Here's the colors. Oh, minus the whatever I just picked up that was on the ground. <laughs> Aren't these beautiful? So these are designed to go together. Teals and some purples. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the colors. Oh, okay. So Magpie Fibers, which you guys are familiar with, I think. And this is their swanky DK. I actually have a um, sweater quantity of Swanky DK that I came back with from um, Ryan Beck. They are. They're just beautiful. So I'm so happy with this um, subscription. I think you can choose. I can't remember. I have to look up some more information on that because I will be getting it again. It is so pretty so really nice base super um squishy and soft and i don't know what that's destined to become um, i haven't figured that out yet i wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of podcasts that i came across um uh one of them is called um the pine cottage and the woman's name is nicole and i stumbled upon her and I super super like her um, aesthetic she is very chill she has a very nice setting and um, she's very enjoyable she was knitting the cozy comfort throw also and um, that was kind of cool so yeah so she's one to check out I'll um, link her down below and then the other one that is new to me is a podcaster called uh, make sure I got it right. Caroline Knits. And she came through my suggested videos. And the reason that I clicked on her was um, she has a new podcast all about podcasting. So 
uh, tips and tricks and thoughts and it was very very interesting so if you are interested in or even toying with the idea of starting a podcast or like me you're a newer podcaster um, it was just very interesting and it was some great tips on it and then um, I went and watched her 2022 year in review of all the things that she knit and um, it was really very interesting so I will link her also down below um, I really really enjoyed that podcasting episode especially so um, yeah so those are a couple of recommendations and then the final thing that I want to talk about is um, my YouTube channel and so I think I have expressed pretty clearly how I feel about doing the podcast. You know, this has been such a joy for me. Uh, it is, I just look forward to each and every episode and the response has been great. And you guys are awesome. Um, you're commenting and you're liking and you're subscribing and all of that is growing my channel. Um, and even if you land here and subscribe and you never come back, that is so appreciated. Um, but those of you who stick around and come back time after time, um, I really, really appreciate that. So we crossed over, um, a, a rather big milestone for, in my eyes, um, and we got, we reached our 500 subscribers. So uh, that prompted me to want to do a giveaway. And um, I have a sock set. This is from Polka Dot Creek. And it is actually called their Gingerbread House uh, with toffee and lipstick are the two colors. Um, this is a DK sock set. I love Polka Dot Creek. I've done quite a few uh, in there. And so this is going to be the prize for the 500 subscriber giveaway. So in order to enter, you have to be subscribed. You have to like this video and you need to leave a comment down below. And I thought maybe I would ask in the comment see if you guys could give me an idea of what you're enjoying, what you'd maybe like to see, or what you don't really care for. I mean, I am open to all of those things. And if you could leave any of those things in the comment below, that will leave, that will enter you in the giveaway. And then on the next episode of a regular podcast, I will draw a winner. So Good luck and thank you so much. And if you have been watching and haven't subscribed yet, I'd appreciate it if you do that. And again, click the like button. That gets me good exposure. And it, um, what it does when you click the like button, it makes it so um, the video is a little bit more exposed and it gets um, you know shown to people who have interest in knitting podcasts. So it's super helpful, helps me grow. So I will draw the winner for that. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everybody who has followed me and, um, you know, stuck around and, and who watches because it's, um, it's really, really great. So that is that. All right. And um, so I have a lot. I am not going to do my future knitting plans here because I don't want this episode to be too, too long. Um, but I am going to do a separate video. I have quite a list of patterns that I would like to knit um, that are on my radar and some of them have been on my radar um, and I am going to do um, a separate video for those so that this doesn't get too long and um, you know some of these things I've had on my list uh, for you know quite a while and some of the things I actually have the yarn for and um, it's just a matter of putting them in play and you know getting them on the needles I don't want to cast on too much at once because mm, that stresses me out <laughs> um, 
So I'm going to do a separate video for some of those pattern ideas that I might like to um, get on my needles. But my 2023, I don't do resolutions. I don't really have um, any super big plans. I don't want to put pressure on myself. I just basically want to knit what I want to knit, when I want to knit it. And if I cast something on and I don't like it, I want to be able to frog it and not worry about it. That's just where I'm at with my knitting. I, um, if I don't have that joy going on, forget it. I don't want it. So, um, all that to say, I would like to, um, get some socks going on for my husband. He, I made him a pair of wool socks, worsted weight. Um, that's in my last video and he absolutely loves them. So he only has this one pair. Of course, they were 100% wool, so I don't know how they're gonna wear. They are felting a little bit on the bottom, but he only wears them on the weekend. He doesn't wear them to work, but I'd like him to be able to have a few more pair of socks so that he doesn't just have to save it for the weekend and he can wear it anytime. So that's my goal. Um, I probably wanna try doing a pair of DK socks for him too, because I do have quite a bit of DK. He doesn't care what color. Um, I did purchase the worsted weight in the Briggs and Little Tuffy, which is a sock yarn. So I do have that too. But anyway, he loves them so much and they are um, Comfy. He wears them in his boots. That was a question a lot of people were asking if they were too thick. He wears them in his boots and he actually wears them in his sneakers, which surprises me. Um, so yeah, that, that, those worked out very, very well. So that's one, just really one of my, I guess you could call it a goal. And also like a few more pair of socks for myself. Um, Cause you know, sometimes we don't take the time. I'm so busy knitting socks for the grandkids and everybody else, I don't always, um, get in any for me. So that's why I snuck that one pair in before anybody knows I'm knitting socks again. <laughs> they haven't seen me knitting them. The, the grandkids haven't asked me for any recently because um, I haven't seen them that much and um, they were very busy with all their Christmas stuff. So, But I'm sure the next time they come, they're going to want to come in the yarn area and see if they can pick out something for that. Anyway, I'm just rambling now. <laughs> Thank you again so much to all of you. And I did want to give a quick shout out to my local knit group. I had them over to my house for a quick couple hour knitting fun. And um, they are big advocates of my podcast and they're always um, commenting on it. So I'm going to say hello to Anne, Alice, Linda, Pam, um, and also to Cheryl, who's currently in Florida. So, hey ladies, thanks so much for your support. All right, everybody, I will see you the next time around. I'm hoping to get that video uh, out on my future pattern likes and wants um, relatively soon. And until then, happy knitting, keep your needles clicking. Bye.